In this video, I'll be showing you how to set up your Scala interface with a USB-C iPad to record music using GarageBand. We are now officially supporting the third generation Scarlet Solo, 2i2, Solo Studio, and the 2i2 Studio with USB-C iPads. If you're using a 4i4 or above, you'll need to connect to a PC or Mac and use Focusrite Control to change your interface settings. For example, switching from line to instrument mode on jack inputs, which is required for recording guitar. There are multiple ways to connect your Scarlet to an iPad. If you're already set up, skip to 3 minutes and 10 seconds. A direct connection allows you to connect your Scarlet to an iPad using just a USB-C to C cable. Connect one end of the USB-C to C cable into the iPad and then connect the other end into the back of the Scarlet interface. Alternatively, you can click on the link below to one of our articles demonstrating different ways you can connect your Scarlet to an iPad. In this video, we're going to be using a pass-through power hub as we want to charge the iPad whilst using the Scarlet interface. You'll need the following things. A Type-C USB hub with pass-through power or a USB-C to C cable for direct connection, the USB-C charging cable that came with your iPad, the USB cable that came with your Scarlet interface, headphones or monitors, and finally, your Scarlet audio interface and your iPad. You'll also need GarageBand, which you can download for free from the App Store. Just open up the App Store, type in GarageBand, and select Get to download it. The full connection will look something like this. You can use this for reference during the setup process. First, connect the USB-C hub to your iPad. Then connect your iPad's USB-C charger to the Type-C port on your USB-C hub. Now connect your iPad's USB-C charger to the nearest mains outlet. A notification should appear on your iPad letting you know that it's charging. The benefit of charging whilst recording is so that it isn't interrupted by notifications and so that your iPad doesn't turn off whilst recording. Now take the Scarlet USB cable and plug it into the back of the Scarlet. Connect the other end to the appropriate port of the USB-C hub. Now you have a choice to connect the Scarlet to monitors, headphones or both. For monitors, connect the appropriate cables into the back of your monitors and then connect the corresponding jack cables into the back of your Scarlet interface. For headphones, insert the jack from your headphones into the front of the Scarlet interface. You should now be set up. Let's get ready to record. Open up your iPad and then open up GarageBand. To start off, you want to press the plus button in the top right hand corner. In this demonstration, we're going to be recording a vocal with a microphone and a guitar directly into the Scarlet interface. We'll start off with making a vocal track. So here I'm going to select voice, and that will bring you to the track settings. We're going to switch monitoring on from the bottom right hand corner. And in the bottom left hand corner, we're going to double check the input source is set to input 1, where it says channel. Since this is a two channel Scala audio interface, I only have input 1, where I'll be plugging in my microphone, input 2, where I plan on plugging in my guitar, or alternatively stereo, where I have the potential to record two channels simultaneously in stereo. Insert the XLR from the microphone into input 1 of the Scala interface. Remember, with microphones there are two types you have to consider, dynamic or condenser. If you're using a condenser like we are, you'll need phantom power. You can achieve this by selecting the 48V button on your Scala interface. Remember to make sure your headphones and monitors are turned down when turning phantom power on or off to avoid damaging your equipment. Now to add an instrument. Select the arrangement button in the top left hand corner and then select the plus button in the bottom left hand corner. Because we're recording an electric guitar, I'm going to scroll and select amp. This will bring you to the amp screen, where you can choose and select different amps and effects. One thing we want to change here is the input settings from the top right hand corner. We're going to switch monitoring on and then select channel. 
If you press this, it will show you all of the input channels from your audio interface. I'm going to select input 2 because I'm going to plug my guitar into input 2 of the Scala interface. Insert the jack from the guitar into input 2 of the Scala interface and then set the jack input to instrument mode by pressing here. If you're using a Scarlett 4i4 or above, you'll need to connect to a PC or Mac and configure this inside Focusrite control before recording. Now go back to GarageBand and select the Arrangement button. Before we start to record, we need to enable multi-track recording. Go to Settings in the top right hand corner, select Advanced from the drop down menu, and then swipe right where it says multi-track recording. Click anywhere else on the screen to exit. You will now see the record arm buttons and monitoring buttons appear on each track. This is currently set to record one track. You can identify this by looking at the record arm buttons presented as small dots on each track. These turn red when they're active. I want to record both tracks simultaneously, so I'm going to arm the guitar track for recording as well. Now if you want to monitor the tracks that you're recording, on each track, next to the record arm buttons, there are monitor buttons. These turn a yellowish orange when they're active. I want to monitor whilst recording, so I'm going to enable monitoring on both tracks. We recommend using headphones instead of monitors to listen to your performance whilst recording. We do this to avoid feedback. Make sure your headphone dial is up. You should now be able to hear your instrument or microphone like this. Try it out yourself. Adjusting your levels. Scala interface inputs have gain halo meters, which makes it easy for you to set your input levels. To make sure you're recording at the right level, play a couple of bars from the loudest section of your song and make sure the gain halos stay green and not orange or red. Green means you're safe and red means you're clipping. Before we start recording, let's get familiar with GarageBand. At the top you'll see your control bar. The go to beginning button moves the playhead to the beginning of the song. While the song is playing, the go to beginning button changes to a stop button. The record buttons start the recording and to stop the recording, tap the play or stop button. The volume sliders allow you to change the volume of each track. And finally, the metronome button starts and stops the metronome click. Now, because we're recording a vocal and an instrument, we want to use the metronome to stay in time. Mine is already enabled, but if yours isn't, press the metronome icon in the control bar and it should light up blue when it's enabled. As GarageBand is set up right now, it's set up to only record eight bars at a time, which means at the end of the eight bars, it will automatically stop the recording. To change this, press the plus button here in the top right hand corner of the arrangement. Select section A and change it from manual, set to eight bars, to automatic. Slide it on and this will let you record for as long as you want. Once you're all set up, hit the record button and get ready to record. stop button to stop the recording and play it back using the play button. You can disable the metronome during playback by pressing the metronome in the control bar. When you're happy with your recording, you can export it by going back into GarageBand's browser by pressing the file icon in the top left hand corner of the screen. Locate your project, hold down the project file and select share. Here you have an option to export it as either a project if you want to tweak it on another device or as a song if you want it as an MP3 or WAV file. 
I'm going to export it as high quality. Enter my song's information, select share and save it within my files. We hope you're set up with your USB-C iPad. If you have any issues with this installation, you can contact support using the link below.